And what's good today, boys and girls of the YouTube world? Yep, it's been a while. Here I am again. Hi. So today, we're gonna work on this Chevy Astro van behind me. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it since I've wrapped it or not. I can't actually remember if I've made a video of this van or not, to tell you the truth. So uh, today, we're gonna do some awesome stuff to this van. We're gonna put a stereo in it. Finally, uh, we're gonna put a Pioneer flip out deck that uh, Brandon is working on over there. Getting the parts all together. So we're gonna do this uh, Pioneer flip out. No Apple CarPlay or anything like that currently, but you know, you don't really need Apple CarPlay to play your iPhone on it. And uh, you know, I really just wanna make this system bump for my own needs. You know, I don't really wanna do a system on this van that's gonna do, you know, 15, 12s and things like that. That'd be cool. But at the end of the day, really, uh, I need to use this as a work van. So uh, we're gonna end up doing three 12s in the back here. I haven't decided on what woofers we're gonna be using yet. Uh, but currently, we're gonna go ahead and start taking apart the dash on this biatch and uh, figure out uh, this this old radio here. Ooh, cheesy. Delicious. Snack time. Snack time. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna clear out all this crap here. Uh, my dad was driving this thing, so I'm not really too sure exactly what's in here. Well, the insurance, we need that. Here's the keys. Uh, there's some paperwork and garbage in here. This all has to come off in order for us to get that radio out of here. So I guess we're gonna work on that right now. Pull this crap off of there. Get all this stuff out of here. I will, uh, I will go through this pile of crap here and uh, figure out exactly what it all is and such. Probably clean out this drawer here. There is some old goo in there and such. So, oh, the phone's ringing. The phone is ringing. I'm gonna answer that. I knew there was a reason I hired employees. <laughs> Anyhow, so we're gonna go ahead and work on this thing here. Gavin is currently putting away a gigantic order from GCM. Uh, some of you guys actually wonder where I get some of this stuff from. Um, like things like uh, my Tessa tape and you know dash kits and harnesses and all that stuff. Uh, the company name is GCM. Uh, they're out of Caledonia, Ontario. Uh, Greg, Chad, and uh, those guys. It's actually Greg, Chad, Metra, I believe is what GCM stands for, as far as I know. Um, and uh, we're just, you know, I made this order here, is dash kits and harnesses and relays and all this fun stuff. This is like Christmas time for yeah. me. Great, right? isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's totally awesome. Got some back straps here, some, some fuses. There should be some split loom in this box too, I think. We need that too. Oh, one of these, one of these. Water resistant fuse holders. Some of you guys are making fun of me and shit on the last video that I made a while ago when I did that system in the Jeep and you guys are like, yo, if I paid a, you know, an audio shop to do uh, an audio system on my Jeep, I'd be mad if they put a fuse holder under my, under my hood that's not waterproof. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're kind of right. Um, and I listened to you, you know? And I, I wanted to get these waterproof ones, but I didn't know if they made them or not. But, you know, when I did make that fuse holder, to my defense, I did put some of this... Uh, what is this stuff right here? This stuff right here. You see that? Put some of this stuff, dielectrical grease on those connections. And you know, that's probably gonna be pretty good. It's, it is under the hood, you know, but I ended up getting these things here. Where do those things go? Where do those things go? Those fucking things here, those freaking. Right here, these water resistant, water resistant ATC, ATM fuse holder. They're kind of neat things like that see so it's got a waterproof connection there on both ends little pigtails so you can wire up your your 12 volt connection and uh ooh, batteries antenna adapters it's christmas time here at carphonics boys it's christmas time so what do you guys think about me doing because i have a set of c5 well jl c5 uh three-way components so i was thinking you know do a component set up front like, I want to keep this thing pretty simple because at the end of the day, if I don't keep it simple, then um, it's going to get out of hand. It'll get out of hand real quick. I own a car audio shop, so I'm sure you can imagine the things that I would like to do to the van versus the things that I should do to the van. Uh, I'm going to be adding an alarm system to the van, obviously, of course, with some keyless entry because right now there is no keyless entry on this. It's all just manual door locks and, uh, you know, You'd be pretty stupid to steal a van that has this much writing all over it, but you never know, man. We do live in a very strange world now. So 
Um, I will, you know, go ahead and put an alarm system on this thing as well. But as for the front stage, I kind of just want to do something simple, like a three-way setup up front from a JLC5. I think that would sound pretty good. We'll amplify the crap out of that. Uh, back here, you know, I'll lay uh, three, three 12s across the floor here, pointing back this way. And then maybe just a couple of uh, six by nines, you know, in some boxes hanging up from the ceiling there. Um, like, I think that would be pretty good for a work van. I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, what you think I should do to this van, but uh, you know, I'd be happy to hear your input and kind of go from there. But today, I think we're just gonna get the head unit, head unit, you can, you guys make fun of me a lot. So I say, it has said head unit, head unit. It's actually head unit, U-N-I-T, unit. We're gonna put the head unit <laughs> into this freaking van and uh, we'll start from there and we'll go ahead and uh, kind of maybe piecing together the uh, the audio system. Definitely gonna be running some one-op power cable on this bad boy here as well. Uh, we're gonna run some T-spec one-op. I think uh, all we're really gonna be pushing on this thing is about, what, about 1,500 watts, Brandon? 1,500 watts all year? Are we gonna put that 1,600 watt in yeah, this the thing? Yeah, kicker, 1,600. 1,600 watt yep. kicker in this thing. Uh, that's gonna power the woofers. And then uh, we're gonna do uh, just, well, I guess we should do a four channel because what I want to do, what do you think about this, Brandon? I'm going to run two six by nines in boxes and screw them to that support at the top on either side. Yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? Get some, get some rear fill. Yeah. And then maybe we don't have to do a three-way setup up front. We could just do a two-way setup. I don't know. When we get there, we'll keep you guys in check and let you guys know exactly what we're doing. Uh, but before uh, I show you exactly what he's doing over here, I will show you the parts that are involved in installing the head unit stereo into the dash of this thing. So it's a 2005 Chevy Astro. It's the last year that they made this van. And the dash kit is a 99-3002 from Metra, the installer's choice. And then we've got a, a GM10 antenna adapter and a 70-1758. Uh, this will get us our power and all that jazz. You guys have seen us wire up harnesses a million times, but we will show you the finished product on that when we get to that stage. So uh, I don't really know what exactly is involved in taking apart the dash on this thing. What I do remember is that it was a complete pain in the dick uh, when I did it originally. I do have a new one of these that I stole out of the van that I gave Chris. Um, so he can have this old one back now because I told him that I would give that to him once that's done. And uh, yeah, so we'll go ahead and update you guys once we get the dash part on this thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Oh man, it is still Christmas time here at Carphonics. What's that? What is that? What is that? Oh yeah, I forgot about this. Strip cock. Got some strip cock from 3M. Um, I don't normally use this kind of thing, but it comes in strips and uh, I'm going to start using it on speakers and things like that that I'm doing in the doors as opposed to the foam tape that we use and see how that works out. I don't really know. I guess some people in the industry call this dum dum. So now we got some dum dum in inventory, which is pretty cool. Jesus, look at all these fun modules and stuff, eh? RCA cables, relays. Oh, these are kind of neat. These are kind of neat. So these are Omega replacement car remotes. So this is pretty new product from Omega. What these does, it says, now works with even more vehicles. Um, this is pretty cool because it will replace the original remote on any one of these vehicles. And then there's the compatibility in the back. It gives you, you know, all the different vehicles that you can use this one remote on. And there's like a programming procedure. Uh, three easy steps to pairing. This remote was designed to be extremely easy to use. Use these following steps to program your remote to your vehicle. No tools of any kind are required. What do you think about that? It's pretty neat, eh? Get, uh, get the big man's opinion on this. So this remote, it's remote. You can pair it to any vehicle from 97 to 2015. Nice. It's like a universal remote it's for a universal cars. remote. So if you, if you need one, boom, bam. Bob's your uncle. I like it. Pretty cool. Yeah. I'm sure it'll require a couple of tech support phone calls because uh, you know we can't get away with doing anything here at Carfonics without calling tech support at least once or twice a day. So there's that. I'm certain the last update that I gave you guys on this van was about these lights. 
Guys, make sure you check out that video in the description below. I'll make sure I put it in the description below. Uh, these are a Oxbeam replacement headlight housing. What are you doing over here? Holy! What's the panel gonna come off this thing, boys? Oh, yep, super fun time. Primitive technology in the uh, good old Astro van. You know, it is kind of nice to work on a van that hasn't actually had any wiring, you know, discrepancies <laughs> at all. It's still factory in every way, which is kind of nice. Uh, when I did put the van back together after I was restoring it and getting the whole thing wrapped, I found like a set of these six and a half inch Pioneer really cheesy speakers just to put in there because the factory ones were literally blowing right, right out on it. So still Christmas time, still Christmas time. Look at this thing, boys. Just AM, FM radio. You guys remember these? These little snap pins from back in the day? That's the way radio should have been installed, eh? And every car just fucking into the hole. Into it's the easy. hole she goes. Nice and easy, yeah. Oh, I got a lot of inventory to put away inside the computer. This will be a fun day. There's a guy out in the parking lot that I dealt with yesterday, and I'm not sure what he's still doing out there, but uh, just trying to see well, maybe what he wants. Ooh, brand new flip out. Neat. So I haven't installed one of these in a while. You don't often get too many flip outs. I had this thing in inventory upstairs. I thought, hey, why the hell not? It should go in the van, right? So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, it comes with a little USB extension here. Uh, that's the wiring harness, uh, Bluetooth mic, uh, nice little remote control here as well. And then some deck screws, which in this case, we're not gonna use because the dash kit on these things are pretty primitive. It's just like a replacement basically of that factory radio. And it has those two little clips on either side. So we'll go ahead and slide the sleeve in there and then start wiring up the harness. Hey, uh, bypass on this. We'll use one of these little, uh, little switch cutouts on the dashboard here. And we'll put a little flip on there. Not that I'll ever, ever use it, but we'll drill a little hole in one of these things with a little switch. Yep. And uh, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right? I don't know where the heck the switches are. Maybe we could do one of these uh, like actual, uh, I will find it over here, let's see. A little bit of pace music in between uh, shots here. Look at that, fucking organized, ugh. organized, ugh. oh here we go. Yeah, here's one of these suckers here. Alrighty, so. What we ended up doing here is our switch on the uh, panel here. Brandon, the sexy installer over here, has done that. And then a USB and an auxiliary port on uh, one of those as well. Super sleek, super sleek. And then I uh, got the deck mounted into the dash kit here. I'm working away on a very strange issue on this thing here. Uh, I may or may not keep you updated on that, but uh, I just wanted to show you that midway before that gets installed. I think Gavin's working on that harness. What are you doing over here, big guy? Big sexy man, you. Like another man stands over your shoulder like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so in the process of installing Ooh, that fucking gaping hole, eh? Good job, buddy. <laughs> Garden hose. Garden hose through the hole there. Yeah. Decent. Some one off cables. What, what, what we got going inside here? What's Gavin working on? What you doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Running some RC cables. Leave the boys to it. Oh, look who it is. It's Craig. Oh, hey guys. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Good, good, good. Good, right on, right on. You got some his new armrest? No, I, I didn't. So this is a JDM armrest. By the way, if you guys want to buy this fucking car, please, please contact me. PM me, all right? I spelt one wrong eight times, just in case you guys are wondering. But uh, perfectly good center console. See, I would have I spent months making this for Chris. But Craig just threw it away, so now it's going in the Cadillac. We have to separate a little bit here, just so it's like just this part here to fit inside the Cadillac, because that's kind of awesome. A little bit of a, you know. It's a custom one, it's been made. Someone made this. It's kind of neat. It's got the wood grain to match. And a couple of little, uh, what is this? Oh, maybe, uh, maybe Craig wants that. I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Hey, Craig. Hey. Do you, uh, do you happen to want your postal, your, your postcard, maybe? I got three of those. Oh, you don't need that? No. Okay. Do you want a discount card for Canada Postal? Kinda. Do you want your, your iPhone case? I got rid of that case. iPhone 6. So, a little 200 amp circuit breaker there, boys. Get some real power pumping. Look at this elephant trunk coming out of the fucking thing. This is real, real nice wire. 
really nice. A little Brahmoot in the firewall there. A little Brahmoot. Very nice. Very nice. What's Gavin up to? Another update here. Another update. I think as far as we'll get today is the deck, RCA cables. Uh, what else? What you doing? <laughs> you can try run the RCAs up here. Ah. The other. Do you think it'll fit up there? Uh -huh. to... You don't know, but you're gonna give it a you're gonna give it a fucking whirl. Give it a try. Decent. All right. All right. So you're looking at a little bit of do didgery here. Um, kind of skipping past all this stuff. We were planning on running those RCAs along there, but there's just simply not enough room, so we gotta take all these side panels off. I did this on the other side of the van at one point, uh, quite a few months ago, just to tidy it up there, make it look a little bit better. Uh, it was looking just like the other side there. So, you know, in order for me to make it look like this, I had to take off this trim panel here and this trim panel here. But of course, being that it's an old van and such, the uh, screws were kind of, um, what you'd call like rusted in there. So um, I had to drill out this panel here in order for me to get that one off and uh, you know The other side looked just like this guy. So bear with me here um, yeah, These are the screws that I had to kind of drill out and you know use a pair of vice grips to get these suckers out of there just completely rotted right away um, This looks a lot worse than it really is. So Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this side of things up on this van and uh, I'm gonna leave the video here for the day. I will show you guys this in a later video, probably tomorrow or the next day. And uh, just show you a little bit of progress here. Head unit uh, wiring's all in, RCA cables are ran. Got our elephant trunk one op power cabling there. And uh, Brandon is currently just working on mounting up the circuit breaker onto the firewall really nicely. And uh, he's adding a battery post there. You got uh, any further comments to make before the video is over today, Brandon? Uh, she's going to hit hard when it's done. She's going to hit hard. <laughs> she's going to hit hard, boys. Yeah. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. For God's sake, just hit that subscribe button. Get that little ding-a-ling bell thing on the side there. And uh, we'll catch up with you guys soon. I got some pretty interesting news to share with you guys soon about SEMA coming up in November. Uh, so stay tuned for that, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you on the flip side.